welcome back to another TechMinds video. So if you saw one of my previous videos on the Malachi SDR receiver as shown here, then you're going to be interested in this video. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the same device, but with fully activated firmware and also built into a case with internal battery and speaker. Now I received this from banggood.com and I'll leave a link down in the description if you'd like to purchase one of these yourself. They do ship worldwide and in my opinion, they're quite a trustworthy website to use. So here you can see the Malachi SDR receiver in a nice metal solid case with a clearly visible three and a half inch color touchscreen. Now on the rear of the unit, you'll notice the speaker grill holes. Now this is where the sound is emitted from the internal speaker. Now on one side of the unit, there is the antenna connection, which is an SMA female. And on the same side, we also have the power button, which tapped once, turns it on, tap again, and it puts the screen off, but still listening. And if you hold that button, it will turn the whole unit off. Now on the other end of the SDR, we find two rotary controls, which are used for volume adjustment and frequency change. Here, we also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket and a USB-C type socket, which is used to charge the internal battery and also perform some computer functions like firmware updates or to extract the audio or IQ data. Now this can also be used for cat control, which we'll talk a bit more about later. On this side, there is also the charge indicator LED and a reset button through the small little pinhole. Now the rotary controls are digital encoders, so they do continuously spin around. They also act as push switches, which are used to change and enable features within the menu system. So let's go ahead and take a look through the menu system, go through each of the features. And remember, this is the fully activated firmware. So we're gonna have all of the features available to us. We're also running version 1.0F. And um, you're five nine plus twenty here uh, in uh, in the eastern part of the Netherlands, uh, Bob. Okay, Mike, back to you. Mike zero, Mike Charlie Victor, Papa Delta zero, Sierra Bravo Juliet. The first menu button, titled Hard, contains the settings mode. Here we can change the encoder directions simply by enabling or disabling. The VBAC control button allows us to configure the SDR to automatically turn off once the internal battery hits 3.3 volts. We then have the SW antenna button. This is used to switch between a 50 ohm antenna and a high Z antenna. Now the high Z option would normally be selected if you're using an attached telescopic antenna. The preamp button allows us to enable or disable the preamp. In my experience, the preamp was needed to be enabled on any of the bands that I chose. We also have an ATT value setting, which is for the RF attenuator level. Now moving on to the next set of buttons, we have the RF gain, which you can adjust to your liking, making sure not to have it set too high so the receiver isn't overloaded. The LNA mix up along with the mix GR can be enabled or disabled depending on your requirements at the time. Now the F correct value can be changed to correct the receiver's frequency. This is measured in Hertz. The SM correct value can be changed if you find the signal meter is not showing the correct values. The Malachi SDR also has beeps to alert you when you're using some functions. Now the beep level can be set to your requirements. I personally have mine set to around seven, which is quite comfortable and not too loud. The IND type value can be changed between SNR and DBM. This changes the signal meter to either signal to noise ratio or the received signal in DBM. The activity timer setting allows the user to set a timeout so that when the time is up, the unit will turn itself off. Now moving over to the audio tab, we find here the noise blanker threshold setting as well as being able to disable the noise blanker if required. AGCLIM allows the user to set a maximum audio output level measured in dB. The AGC gain can also be configured here when the AGC is turned off. So this will act as a manual AGC value. Now while in wide FM mode, normally listening to a broadcast radio station, you can enable wide FM stereo along with the EQ type. EQ types will be like rock, jazz, blues, dance, etc. 
to give you more of a fuller sound when you're listening with headphones. Now the filter button will toggle between narrow and wide, although using the low frequency and high frequency settings, you can customize your own filter bandwidth here. Now this is very useful when you're using SSB. A built-in squelch is provided, and if enabled, it will use the squelch threshold value. One of the nice DSP features of the Malachi SDR is the noise reduction feature. Here you can also set the noise reduction threshold as to which point the noise reduction will kick in. So moving on to the visual tab, we find settings for minimum and maximum brightness. The reduct time is the amount of time to elapse before the unit will switch from max brightness to minimum brightness. If the LCD sleep option is enabled, the LCD will turn off completely after the time set in the sleep time setting. Now the FFT AVE or FFT average is the averaging speed of the FFT. FFT scale allows the user to set the spectrum analyzer display range or the FFT color setting allows the user to change the color of the line of the FFT. Pan percent will adjust the ratio of the spectrum and waterfall shown on screen. So this will allow you to choose the size of the FFT to a smaller size if you prefer a larger waterfall and vice versa. WTF delay changes the actual speed of the waterfall. I prefer mine quite fast, but with this setting, you may adjust this to your liking. The WTF gain setting allows you to make signals more prominent on the waterfall, especially if they are weak signals. Now, careful not to turn this up too high, otherwise it'll look a complete mess. The FFT fill option, which can be enabled or disabled, allows the user to have the FFT filled with a solid color, or just show the signal line if disabled. View pan and WTF or waterfall enables or disables the waterfall and FFT. Maybe to save battery power if you're just listening to a specific frequency and you don't need the display. The NR button will enable and disable the noise reduction system with an indicator shown on the very top line of the display. Having this button here makes it very easy and convenient to turn it on and off when required. Now the mode selection allows the user to change between the usual modes of demodulation. And underneath the modes, we have an option to turn on the built-in CW decoder, along with setting the minimum signal to noise ratio for the decoder. So the band tab will show you five banks of 10 stored frequencies. This is quite useful if you want to quickly change bands without having to manually type in the frequency or twist that encoder millions of times. The most common ham radio bands will already have been programmed when you receive the SDR. Now the top bar has some indicators showing squelch, noise blanker, noise reduction, AGC, antenna and preamp status. The mode is also shown along with the AGC level, volume level and filter setting. Now to quickly change the AGC volume or filter without having to go into the menu system, simply push the volume encoder once and you'll see an underline move from one to the other. Turning the volume encoder will change the value on the corresponding setting. Now, if you push in once the frequency change encoder, this will allow you to change the frequency steps, i.e. how much is changed per click of the encoder. Underneath the battery charge level indicator are two further indicators for headphones and speaker. To turn these on or off, just tap the screen and it will cycle through them. To enter a direct frequency, simply tap on the frequency readout and a keypad will appear allowing you to enter a direct frequency. Another feature of the Malachi SDR is RDS decoding while in FM stereo mode on the broadcast band. Now I had limited success with this as it didn't appear to work on all stations. Now as mentioned before, the Malachi SDR has a built-in CW decoder, but in my opinion, it's actually quite fiddly to get working. Just make sure that you've set the filter bandwidth quite narrow and put the minimum SNR to around 25 but this will depend on how strong the CW signal is that you're trying to decode. Now the fully activated firmware states that it opens up reception all the way up to two gigahertz, but does it really? In this test, I use my Adam Pluto and SDR console to transmit an upper sideband signal and recorded the Malachite receiving it. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one two one two one two. Testing one two three four five. 
we are 1.5 gigahertz and you can see that the Malachite DSP SDR is actually slightly off frequency. Now another cool feature of the Malachite SDR is the ability to control it from your PC. Now here we can see HD SDR running on my computer with it perfectly in sync with the Malachi SDR. Now this is possible through just using a single USB cable. The SDR can be CAT controlled using the Kenwood CAT protocol and couple this with the IQ stream from the SDR and fed into HD SDR, you can use your computer to tune and listen. Now this is all possible because the Malachi SDR exposes a COM port and audio IQ stream to the computer when it's plugged in via USB. You'll notice here that there are two audio interfaces. One contains the demodulated audio from the SDR, so you can record it if you like, and the other is an IQ stream. Now a feature of HD SDR is the ability to take its audio source from an actual audio source. So using OmniRig configured in HD SDR, we're then able to control the Malachite's SDR frequency and modes. Now, while I've been compiling and creating this video over the past week, a new firmware version has just been released, version 1.10. Now, most of the new key features are actually cosmetic, changing how some of the buttons work and integrating some features into just one button, such as the rotary encoder direction. But there are two main features which I would like to point out. Now, the first being an option to now swap the IQ stream output. This is because some of the Chinese clones merged the IQ together and it wasn't actually usable, but this new feature sorts that out. The other feature I will mention is the ability to suppress a visual DC spike that you may see in the middle of the screen. Now I have two of these units, both from banggood.com and neither of them experience this issue. But if you do have a DC spike right in the middle of the display, then you can use this feature to counteract it. Well, there we go, guys. That's an in-depth look at the fully activated firmware for the Malachi SDR. Now, if you own one of these devices, which is running the test demo firmware, then it will cost you $50 to upgrade the firmware. Now, the test firmware itself is actually feature rich, and I covered that in a previous video. But if you've seen any features in this video which you do not have, then you will need to upgrade. Luckily though, it is just a one-off fee. Now just to point out, the reason for the cost of the firmware upgrade is that the Malachi SDR is actually open source, but for hardware only, meaning that anyone can take the design and build it themselves, even mass produce it. However, the true function of firmware is not open source and is copyrighted by the developers. Now, this is why when you receive your cheap Malachi SDR, that it only comes with demo firmware. Now, this also ensures that the original developers of this hardware and firmware actually get paid for all their hard work. Anyway, guys, there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until the next video, stay safe, take care. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.